So let's say that you were in your used or antique bookstore and you discover that they have Oz books. And among the Oz books are two different editions of the same book. So what you naturally do is you open them up and check out the copyright page to find out when the two books were published. Maybe you're interested in finding older editions and to your bewilderment, you discover that the two books have not only the same copyright date, but are both somehow first editions. What? Hello fellow Ozians. I'm the Louisiana Quadling, a Wizard of Oz collector and enthusiast, sharing with you my thoughts, my collection, and a little bit of my musical talent with all of you. And welcome to my channel. Have you ever wondered how you can identify the different Oz books from another? Or maybe do you want to be able to identify what a first edition is compared to a later edition? Without, of course, having to be an Oz book encyclopedia? Today, I'll be going over some tips to help you to better be able to identify the different editions of one Oz book to another. Now, I know that this can seem very overwhelming and frankly crazy considering there's been well over a hundred years of different editions of the various Oz books. I won't be going over everything, but I'll be giving you an overview of how you can identify some of the major different editions from another. That most glaring piece of evidence that people commonly misstep for first edition is the copyright date on an Oz book. John R. Neal created these very elaborate illustrations for the copyright pages on pretty much all of the Oz books that he illustrated. And none of them were ever updated after the copyright date was either renewed or a new edition came out. I don't know whether the publisher just never asked Neil to re-illustrate the page or maybe after he died they never contacted anyone else to update that page. It's just very strange because they were never updated. So you can't rely on that copyright page to tell you which edition of that book you're really looking at. One thing to remember about the Oz books is that you'll never find a paperback to be a first edition because none of the Oz books when they were originally issued were ever issued in paperback originally. They were all issued as hardbacks with dust jackets. Now, I know this might seem a little bit strange t from today's standards of some books first coming out in paperback. And, you know, obviously there are other books that come out in paperback later on in the same year that they're released. But paperbacks were not a big thing back in 1900 when The Wonderful Wizard of Oz was first published. It wasn't until 1939 <laughs> ironically, that the first paperbacks were printed in America. So don't go around thinking that that paperback that you just found is a first edition because that paperback edition came way later. Another great indicator to help you to know which edition you're really looking at is to see the publisher of who published the book. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz was originally published by the now-defunct George M. Hill Company. Later editions were published by Donahue, and after that was Bob's Merrill. It wasn't until 1956, when The Wizard of Oz went into public domain, that Riley and Lee published their first edition of The Wizard of Oz, which featured new illustrations. From the second Oz book, The Marvelous Land of Oz and Onwards, all of those books were originally published by a company that was originally named Riley and Brenton. In 1918, that company renamed to Riley and Lee. 
So if you should find any of the Oz books from the second to eleventh books, which is the Land of Oz through to the Lost Princess of Oz, that feature the publisher Riley and Brenton, you know that that is either an early edition or possibly a first edition of that book. All of the other Oz books from book 12, which was The Ten Woodmen of Oz onwards, were published by Riley and Lee. Now, let's say that you pick up an early looking edition of The Ten Woodmen of Oz. How do you know that this one is an at least early edition of this book, since you can't tell by the publisher and you can't tell by the copyright date? Well, let's open up the book and see if the book features color illustrations. Al Frank Baum was very innovative with his designs for his Oz books, especially the first six Oz books. These first editions could easily be called special or deluxe versions by today's standards. Most of the Oz books featured color plates that were inserted into the books. Now, there are 13 books in the Oz series that don't feature any color plates, and those were The Road to Oz and Captain Salt of Oz all the way to the end of the series with Merry-Go-Round in Oz. Just because an Oz book features color plates doesn't mean that that book is a genuine first edition. It could just be an earlier edition. As Riley and Lee produced new editions of the Oz books, they reduced those color plates down until they eventually completely removed them in 1935. So if you should find an Oz book, like let's say this edition of Glinda of Oz, that only features black and white illustrations, you know that this book was published at least after 1935. And that was just the tip of the iceberg of information to know which edition you were really looking at. If of course you want a way better worded and much more detailed look at the Oz books, don't hesitate to get yourself a reference book. There are a handful of books that can be really great resources for you to be able to identify the Oz books. Now, I had only one for years, and that one came from the International Wizard of Oz Club, and that is Bibliographer Oziana. It's a really great resource, not a lot of pictures. If you're a picture person, this might not be for you, but it does give you a lot of details on which edition is which, and it's definitely helped me to be able to identify which Oz books I currently have in my collection. And the best part about this book, versus a lot of other ones, is that it's really affordable. It's only $15 on the Oz Club website. I've got it linked down below. So if you want to be able to identify your Oz books and you want a cheap alternative, pick up Bibliography Oziana. And if you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe. New videos are posted every two weeks on the 15th and last day of each month. And if that doesn't satisfy your appetite for Oz, follow the link in the description to ozclub.org and join the International Wizard of Oz Club. Until next time, bye y'all.